Welcome to Balanced Life with Debbie Carlin Boyle, conversations connecting to a healthier you, the show that gives you all the latest and greatest health and wellness information to inspire you to live a life of balance and joy. Debbie Carlin Boyle is a health and nutrition coach, personal trainer, and fitness instructor who helps her clients live in balance with everything that feeds us in addition to the food on our plate. Please welcome your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome this Tuesday afternoon. I'm back. It's a new year, 2023. It's January. I haven't seen you since before Christmas. So I thank you for coming back and joining me today. I'm really excited about the show. And stick around because I think there's some great information, especially for you ladies out there. But if you're a guy and you're listening, this is a good show for you too. So hang in there. I also want to tell you that if there are kids in the room, you might want to use discretion because we're going to be talking about some saucy topics today we are talking about sex and women's health so um, just use your discretion on whether or not you want kids in the room but I also want to tell you a little bit about me because you've reached my show which is Balanced Life by Debbie conversations that connect to a healthier you I'm a live streaming show I'm also a personal trainer a fitness instructor and a health and nutrition coach and I help people live a life of balance so they can align themselves with all the things, all the little bullet points that it takes to implement into your life to live a life of longevity with quality because that's what it's all about is to have a good, long, healthy life. And sometimes we just need a little help. Everybody has a coach for so many things that we do in life, whether it's a sport or an instrument or anything musical, no matter how great you are, sometimes a coach to just push you and help you think a little bit out of the box and make progress is all you need. So to find me, you can go to my website, which is Balanced Life by Debbie, D E B I dot com. And there you'll see all of the services that I offer, which are one on one group, and I do talks to groups, uh, all different types of groups from elementary schools to senior homes to working with a company that's called Makeovers That Matter with um, with vets who came back and from uh, doing their service and really needed some help getting their life back in order. So I, I can be anywhere to help people with anything that they need to live a life of balance. So get a hold of me by going to my website. You'll also see a free winter detox that you can download. It's recipes for three days of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They're healthy, easy to make. There's a shopping list on there. And all you have to do is implement that. And I'm telling you, after three days, you're lighter on your feet and you get a jump start. You get rid of those nasty cravings for not so good foods and sugars. And then off and running, you go. So do that if you can. Also, while you're at it, if you go to my YouTube channel, I've been doing these shows for seven years. So I have well over 200 shows. And they're all in the health and wellness realm with people who are experts in the field. And you can ask a question, whether it's about finances or like today's show about sexuality or whether it's about healthy wines, I've done a show on it. So if you go to my YouTube channel, just hit subscribe and you'll always get alerted when a new show comes up. So I also want to let you know that we're live. So you can become part of this conversation because that's the idea and why I do the show. So to become part, and if you're watching live, you can in, join us in a couple of ways. One is to call in at area code 323-524-2599. That's 323-524-2599. Or you can go to my Facebook page where we're streaming live, Balance Life by Debbie, D-E-B-I, and you can ask a question or make a comment in the comments below. And I check those throughout the show. So I'm able to answer myself or my guests will get you involved in the conversation that way during the show if you want to. 
Now, after the show, which a lot of people listen to us or watch us after, then you can do the same thing. Ask a question, make a comment. I get in touch with the guest and they go ahead and uh, relate to your question. So there you have it. I hope you get involved with us today. Stick around because this is a good one. Because my guest today is Dr. Janet Williams who is a licensed physician and surgeon practicing here in Los Angeles, California. She is a board certified specialist in obstetrics and uh, gynecology, the founder of IntimateWellnessShop.com, which is and an intimate life coach and the author of the book, Why Don't I Like Sex Anymore?, As a member of the International Society for the Study of Women's Sexual Health, she has been helping women find solutions to their reproductive reproductive and sexual health concerns since 2001. Dr. Williams believes every woman, regardless of age, race, shape, or belief system, should have power over her own body the right to express herself sexually, and the ability to dictate her own brand of pleasure. She founded goodgroove.com, where she is an intimacy life coach with a special interest in the needs of black women. She helps women over 40 conquer the physical and emotional changes that often come with age. And she treasures their national, to treasure their natural magnificence and enjoy phenomenal confident pleasure. All right, so you're ready. So let's talk how you can too. So will you please welcome my guest, Dr. Janet Williams to the show. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Hi, Dr. Janet. Thank you for being here. You're live in the studio. Yay. I I think this is my third or fourth show live in the studio. Yeah. um, In the last two months. So I'm very excited to be back in the studio and doing this kind of thing again. In general, it's so great to be back in person for so many reasons, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) And I'm so glad that you're a local doctor and that we found each other because I, quite frankly, in all the years I've been doing shows, I don't think I've done a show quite like this. Um, we've done a show on women's on, on women's health mm-hmm. in general, yeah. but we haven't really got into the intimacy stuff before. Right. And so uh, I am really excited to dig deep into that with you. Let's so, jump in. Yes. <laughs> but before we do, I want to hear about your background and, you know, obviously you're a gynecologist and I want to hear how that interest came up and where you're from. And mm-hmm. then we'll talk about how you kind of segued into noticing how women are really struggling with their sexual pleasure. So. Right. Yeah. So I'm an obstetrician gynecologist. I've been working um, in that in clinically for the past 20 years or so. I do come from a medical family. Um, so I have um, a, my dad is a doctor. He's a surgeon. My mom is a registered nurse. They're both retired. Um, but um, I had that as a background and I kind of knew early on that I wanted to, you know, go into medicine as well. Um, and it was, I initially thought I was going to be an ear, nose and throat doctor for some reason. And (laughs) when I actually got into doing my rotations, I did a delivery and it was like such a spiritual and beautiful, like thing that I was just sold. So it was between, I was kind of thinking between surgery, like general surgery, uh, family medicine. And then I did my OB gyne rotation and it was just like a combination of all of those things. And it was just like a beautiful thing. So I, I, I enjoy the surgical and technical aspects of it, but I also enjoy the one-on-one and helping people navigate, um, you know, general health, you know, cause being pregnant is not a disease. It's just something that is natural and, um, a natural part of life and so that's that's how I got my start yeah I love that yeah I love that because I yeah are, are you from LA did you I, say you are? I am I grew up in the Pasadena area oh you did yeah, yeah. okay very cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah I think uh, there's nothing better than to help people navigate life and childbirth is such a miracle it I myself is, had yeah. two natural childbirths no intervention whatsoever God bless you my daughter <laughs> two years ago had a home birth Oh, wow. 100% naturally, too. So I kind of created a little little legacy. I'm hoping that it continues. It's nothing better. That It's it just tears of joy, you yeah. know, miracle of life. Yes. So I understand that that 
moment, that aha moment mm-hmm. for you. Yeah. So, and um, so what got you to kind of segue into women's sexual health? And so, yeah, I it's interesting because when you when you're going through residency, at least at the time that I was going through it, um, there wasn't a whole lot in the way of sexual medicine uh, for women. It just kind of didn't exist. And so, um, you know, when we go through our training, we can do, you know, a hysterectomy in our sleep. You know what I mean? Um, Right. The technical stuff. The technical stuff, the medical disease. But, you know, when it comes to the regular natural function of the reproductive organs, we just weren't getting any training on it. And I remember uh, like like a friend of mine um, or someone that I had met that was not in the medical field, and I told them what I did. They're like, "Oh, can you tell me about some sexual positions?" And I was like, "I don't, I don't know anything about sexual positions. Like, I don't know anything really about sex, which is kind of crazy, you know. Think about I know right. everything about the anatomy, the physiology, you know, how to you know s- handle hormones and what to do with bleeding and fibroids and and the list goes on. But when somebody asked me about you know, sexual basic stuff. I didn't, I didn't have any answers for them. So that was kind of the first thing. Um, and then when I got into a uh, practice after I'd finished my residency um, program and was practicing, um, got my board certification, um, I just started seeing a lot of women, all ages, but mostly, you know, over 30, 40s and definitely in the 50s who mm-hmm. would come in and just be like I don't want to have sex anymore or it hurts or you know help me with my libido you know this question that kept coming over and over again and I would ask my colleagues um, even more senior um, seasoned colleagues and they just didn't really have any good answers no, no it wasn't so you know and it's they... it's an awkward thing when you have someone coming to you and it's vulnerable to, you know, open up to your doctor and say, hey, I have this problem. And then you're like, it is a problem, but I don't know what to do. (laughs) I don't know what to to tell you. (laughs) You know, some of my colleagues were like, oh, tell them to, you know, drink wine and relax, put on some lingerie. And that wasn't really, that wasn't the issue that was coming up. You know, it was not about lingerie. It was not about date night. You know, some of it is, but like, that wasn't the the thing. You no, know? that didn't nas- necessarily change their take their pain away or, right. or take their desire away. Exactly, or, or bring s- their desire back. Yeah. So it was these like encounters with with women who were having this real, very real problem um, to a very important part, uh, por- important aspect of our lives that just was not being addressed at all. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of where this was born initially. Yeah. Well, and it's really cool that you jumped on it, you know, because you could have put that aside as well. Mm -hmm. But you realized it was coming up more and more that, you know, and, 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 you know, there are the physiology of it all of us going through menopause Mm -hmm. does have something to do with loss of hormones. Yes. We lose desire because we're losing the hormones that really create the desire and help us to um, achieve satisfaction, you know, and so that's hard. And so, and everybody, you know, it, it's universal, but everybody is so individual too, because mm-hmm. the timing, like I didn't go through menopause until I was 59 years old. So wow. that was really late. Yeah. And then, and, but I but was hearing all these things that I should be expecting and then right. they did come. Well, that's know? good. So, you know, some you know, of those things are not great. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, it came late, but they yeah. came and they're, they're still sticking around. Okay. That's a whole other thing. But um, because they did try the uh, bioidentical hormones and stuff. But um, there were other repercussions from that. So it's it's. I know you write in your book that hormone replacement is not for everybody. And right. hormone replacement doesn't guarantee sexual satisfaction right because either. you know it's it's multifactorial so it's not one thing and that's that's where the issue is I, I remember a colleague telling me like one of the people who said oh you know after a certain age uh women just need you know they can't have sex anymore you know and I'm like what uh, I know you wrote <laughs> like, that in your book I read crazy. that in your book. yeah it's, yeah it's like okay thank you thank yeah, you no. yeah but it, it is it's um you know biopsychosocial is you know um when we look at it in the um, in the field of sexual medicine, the desire, libido, 
the sexual function is is multifactorial. So it, it's not only hormones. It's not only your relationships. It's not only your environment. It's all of those things that contribute to, you know, how you will your desire will be and you know how you will uh, function um, from a sexual standpoint. Yes, and I think you know one of the reasons why I thought it was really important to have someone like you here with your passion and expertise is because it's part of our overall health. Totally. Having um, that physical connection, having a strong sexual uh, life and feeling, having orgasms, that's all part of wellness. Mm -hmm. That was all the things I was talking about at the beginning of the show, all the bullet points, all the pieces that need to connect to right. come together. That's one of them. It's And that's been proven, scientifically mm -hmm. proven, to show longevity. So, uh, you know, I think it's real important, but women brush it off as the desire kind of goes down. They just say, well, it's the time where I'm at, you know, mm -hmm. age-wise, right. and it's expected, so I don't need to, I'm not where I was when, you know, yeah. you know, when you first meet your, your significant other, or the, the first real love relationship you have, you go at it all the time, mm -hmm. sexually, <laughs> partly because you can't keep your hands off of each other. Right. And no one says that they, at this age, we have to be those crazy people you right, know right. jumping all over each other at this age but it doesn't mean that you can't still enjoy and passionately be involved absolutely with well i think that there is a really huge like cultural problem that does not prioritize women and so it, as it as it pertains to sex and pleasure um it's just not something that we're we were brought up thinking that is something that we own um, but that's a fallacy, you know, like it oh, is our time. natural right. Yes. And so to kind of get us to rethink how we approach things, because you know, a lot of women, especially, you know, uh, at this point in time who are in their 40s and 50s, we grew up in an age where, um, you know, our responsibility to family, our responsibility to our husbands, our partners were more on the forefront, you know, mm -hmm. and so to sex was really about like pleasing your partner and not necessarily about the partners pleasing each other, you know? No. And I think that that is a, a problem in the way that our culture thinks. And then it, you know, has an effect on people tap it out, you know, <laughs> basically like, well, I'm, I've got this problem. I'm out, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pursue this anymore. Right. So. And, and it's taboo. I mean, I grew up, I, I'm, I'm significantly older than you and I grew up in an age where it was, you do not talk about sex. You were, my parents, my mother didn't, mm -hmm. you know, I, it, I was around 10 when, I know you wrote something in your book about when people, when somebody, and I think it was like kindergarten or something, somebody said something to you how babies were made. Oh, yeah. And then your mom really abruptly <laughs> yeah. told you how babies super, were made. Yeah, that, which, super clinical. And yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. mine didn't, mine just brushed it up because God forbid, she, you know, it was the 60s. God forbid she should say anything to me about how it really was, made, you know, it just was so taboo because she grew up in the 30s and 40s mm -hmm. when nobody, it, it, it really, it was just really about procreation. Right. You know, totally. and like you said, it, it, satisfaction for the man was just a given, but the woman was just there to have babies. Right. You know, that was the whole stay at home yeah. wife thing. And we're different now. Mm -hmm. It's different now. We're out in the open and now it's it. We can talk about the fact that we deserve pleasure mm -hmm. and that we can ask for it. But sometimes there are obstacles. So we, like you, you talk a lot about painful sex. What mm -hmm. is that? What, what is the most common reason for painful sex? And what, it, what do you find can be, because that's part of the reason why women brush it off at this right. age, at this stage. Yeah. So, you know, painful sex, what, what I see most often is a pretty simple fix. Um, and it has to do with the moisture in the vagina. So vaginal dryness, which we see happen, you know, um, in menopause and perimenopause, um, the decrease in the amount of estrogen that's in our bodies. Um, and estrogen is important for lubrication and, and it's important for the 
the texture of our skin and um, the moisture and the texture of the vaginal tissues. And so when those um, hormones start to wane or, or drop down a little bit, or even they fluctuate. And so what we can see is there are some changes, like some physical changes that happen in the vagina. They're subtle, so it's not like you're looking down there and you see like something different, but you might feel like burning after intercourse or um, like just discomfort. Mm -hmm. um, and so that like, it's sort of a, a cycle because if you're having those symptoms, like if, if you have sex and it hurts a little bit, then the next time it comes time to have sex, you're probably not going to want to have sex because no. it, it's it, it, it it causes anxiety right. to even anxiety. thinking about it because you know it's going to be painful. Yeah. So that is probably the most common thing that I see. And it, and it doesn't just affect, um, you know, perimenopausal and menopausal women. We also see this in women who are on birth control because mm. the way that birth control works mm -hmm. is by suppressing hormones and I'm talking about hormonal birth control um, so you know any kind of the injections or, or pills that you take right um, not so much like um, the IUD like the copper right, IUD right. Or anything like that. but anything that, that has any hormones in it is going to be suppressing the normal levels of estrogen in your body and so that's why we'll see a lot of times in women who are you know in their 30s and still not you know perimenopausal or, or menopausal having pain related to being on the birth control pill. Um, also, women who have uh, had a baby and are breastfeeding, same thing happens. The estrogen levels are low. And so you can have it, um, dryness in the vagina, mm -hmm. even though you just had a baby, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you could be 22 yeah. years old and have vaginal dryness. So um, that's one of the most common things that has a pretty easy fix for and what is the easy yeah, the fix? The easy fix for? is a little vaginal estrogen, um, estrogen cream. There's tablets, there's rings, there's all kinds of things that are um, useful vaginally. And the great thing about vaginal estrogen is that it is not really absorbed systemically. And so for women who are worried about, um, you know, um, deep vein thrombosis or things that would be problematic if you were taking the estrogen orally. Yes. Um, we don't worry about that so much with the vaginal um, estrogen. Okay. Yeah, I was so, going to say it. Some people are... Vaginal yeah. estrogen for everyone. So is, it, <laughs> so is that something that they could get from your website or do you need no, a prescription? No, that's a prescription. You'll yeah. need to talk to okay. your doctor about All it. Right. Um, you know, you want to talk to your doctor about it. If you've had uh, breast cancer, an est estrogen uh, receptor positive breast cancer, it's a discussion that you you should have. But even at that, there are oncologists who still recommend, you know, vaginal estrogen. Um, but it is a conversation that you're going to want to have just to, right. you know, discuss the pros right. and cons. Yeah. 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 But anybody, once they talk to their doctor, can access that. Pretty much. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so in terms of, well, so you're an intimate intimacy coach. Right. What what give us that definition? What does a coach do? Well, what do you do with really? It, what it is, it's like it, just like you have a life coach, and you were kind of mentioning in your in your um, overview that there is help for everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And there are people who have expertise in every area. Um, and I I I actually love the idea of coaches for everything <laughs> because you know people have experience in 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 ways that you may not get in education. Um, that can be very specific and very helpful. I've actually used coaches myself. Um, and a part of the reason why I got even further interested in uh, sexual medicine and sexual wellness for women is that I had my own uh, journey that I went through. I, I went through some infertility um, that was not successful and it had a you know huge impact on my own sexual wellness and uh, desire okay. libido. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a lot of it was some of it was um, just physical, but all, a lot of it was emotional as well. Um, and I had a therapist and I had um, a coach that helped me kind of rebound. And it was so helpful. And I bet. And I bet a lot of women that have gone through that and there are millions yeah. that have those repercussions. Right. When it's not successful. Yes. And so, yeah. Um, and. And so when I talk about an uh, intimate life coach is how I like to describe myself is is for those, you know, um, 
times in your life where you're you're going through something um, with your intimate life, you know, whether it's a relationship issue that deals with sex or just, you know, some of these physical changes and navigating through perimenopause and menopause. Um, and or I have a client right now who um, such a cute lady. She's um, in her 70s and she has not um, she hadn't had sex for like 27 years. And she um, re- rekindled with an old flame, Aww. and they are just so cute and like back at it. When they tried initially, it was not happening, you know. And so we worked together, and um, you know, got her on some vaginal estrogen, and you know, did some other other things um, to get her to her goals. And that's the idea: is to kind of define what your goals are. What are you trying to do? Mm-hmm. Um, And then we kind of map out the steps to get there. And then we go through the steps and get there. Which is fabulous. And which is what I was saying earlier, earlier that Mm -hmm. everybody's so individual. Yeah. Um, What's not working, what is working, what their needs are. Some people want to have sex every day and some people don't, you know, and that needs to be respected too. But, you know, I like the fact, and that's what coaches should do, is map out. That's what I do with my clients Mm -hmm. from a health standpoint. Map out the goals take the steps to get there right you know one logical step at a time yeah. which is so important to achieve the goal and yeah. you know change change a habit she got in the habit obviously of not having sex mm-hmm. and so did her mind and her body and the mind and the body connection especially in sex is so important yeah and she she had to sort of recreate a habit of right. getting her mind back into the moments, right. you know. And then there's so much, you know, like like you said, individuality, like there's like shame around a lot oh, of stuff. Big, and big so, time. you know, when we're dealing with shame about like, j- let's, let's say just being of a certain age, you know, that's a whole thing in and of itself. Like people, it's ridiculous, <laughs> but I'm it's a thing. You, <laughs> you know, I'm almost 65. I, yeah. I know it. And I think about... So I'm in the dating scene, and for women my age that are in the dating scene, we're competing with 20 years younger than us, Mm -hmm. with men that are our age going after that. And believe me, I I know, I personally know this situation. And so, uh, you know, all of a sudden we feel less than, Mm -hmm. we feel we can't keep up, we're not as desirable because all the wrinkles and all the places have come in. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, there's vaginal uh, atrophy that happens. Then, and so we there, there's shame or embarrassment about that. We now that. call that, just so you know, we now call that the genitourinary syndrome of menopause. Oh, much it's much better, nicer. Much better, yeah. <laughs> it's not what it's said. Get atrophy out uh, of here. Yeah, and that's not what it says on the charts that I've seen. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. That's so, a, it's a newer it's a, oh, a nomenclature newer, that good. is not fully adapted, but that's... That's the new. I like that one. Yeah. That's better. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. you know, I, uh, I, I see other. I have a few other friends that are my age and a little bit older, actually, mm-hmm. that are in the dating scene. And there's this. It's very difficult to feel competitive. Yeah. When when the men themselves know that there's loss for us, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of our sexual desire, and they're not kind of at our level yet you know yeah. mentally or physically so it's tough it's yeah, tough it and tough. it makes it hard and I imagine that you know as a coach you work with women in giving them the confidence yeah a big part of it is sort of is reframing the way that we see that so that we're able to find a way to embrace those wrinkles and realize that without those wrinkles we aren't who we are I know you know I um agree. like our skin is holding us together. You know, if we reframe the way that we think about it, it's like you can literally like it gives me chills to think about it, like fall in love with yourself because of what your body has done for you, you right. know, and what it has brought you through. You know, I literally have c- conversations with the cells in my body like, thank you. Or uh, like, I'm sorry I ate <laughs> those hot Cheetos, my bad, you know, but like I'm going to take care of you. And then when there's something that switched in my brain when I realized that my body has been <laughs> supporting me in that way, mm-hmm. like I want to fuel it better, you know, I want to get it its sleep, you know, like yep. so that it can take care of me and then continue to give me the pleasure. Like it, 
I have had some mind blowing pleasure from my body, you know. And so when we're able to kind of make that switch and it takes Mindset. some work mm-hmm. to get there, but mm-hmm. making that switch, um, it changes things. And then this, the secondary gain from that is that once you made that switch, that your confidence goes up, right? And when your confidence goes up, the people around you see that. And it will be the younger men that are trying to talk to you. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, because you can and, walk. And that ha- yeah. happens. It happens. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I'm here to tell you that it does. Yes. <laughs> because I've there's something it. like yeah. when you tap into that realization about how beautiful we are, like regardless of, you know, gender, but like as human beings, like the fact that we're here and like breathing and you know, the things that our bodies do without us even thinking about it, like, you know, our food is being digested. I had a sip of water. Like, I'm not thinking about that happening. It's just happening, right? But it's the miracle of life that all these things that come together that keep us functioning, you know, is uh, amazing because people do abuse their bodies. It's one of the reasons why I have a job (laughs) is to help people go in a different direction so they don't go you know, go down for the count with the disease that can come in from the abuse. But your body always wants to go back to its healthiest Mm -hmm. place. It always does. Definitely. So if you kept eating those hot Cheetos every (laughs) single day at a pack a day, finally, even talking to yourselves, your body would just go, you know what? You can yeah, talk, can. Yeah. but you got but what you do right. is more. And so that comes with mindset. Mm-hmm. And you're right. That's what a coach is about to kind of change the narrative yeah. that's up there, mm-hmm. the dialogue that keeps us. Because, I mean, that's with anything, whether it's a job, mm-hmm. or, you know, or procrastination. Uh, yes, yeah. It's anything. With anything, we can talk ourselves that we're not good enough so why bother Mm -hmm. you know so that comes with relationships it comes with work it comes with uh our creativity Mm -hmm. it comes you know just i'm not good enough and that is you know i really haven't in the past thought about how it could come with your sexuality absolutely but i have to tell you you know and i'm a, a very high functioning sexual person even at 64 i'll be 65 next month in about Ooh, four weeks birthday. yes thank you about four <laughs> weeks um and so you know it's that's never been lost on me mm-hmm. um and yet i still in and it's mindset you know like i was saying earlier that men aren't going to desire me the older I get because the more wrinkles and the more gray and the more, you know, pounds or whatever comes forward, you know, age spots, the more they're going to gravitate to the younger, more probably highly more sexual person than me. And that's my narrative that I Mm -hmm. have to, you know, but I, like I said, I know a lot of women as we age are, are feeling that because we have reminders that even though mm-hmm. what you were saying earlier, oh my God, it's so great. Look at what our bodies have come through all these years. We still have reminders every day that a new spot, a new wrinkle, a new gray hair, a new uh, you know a pound pops up mm-hmm. that takes our our hap our, our makes us a little more depressed. Yeah, you know, makes us a little bit more cognizant of oh because sometimes i'll look in the mirror and go who is that person yeah like i don't recognize i recognize me as sort of like 35 to 45 (laughs) forever yeah yeah and then below that i feel like who's that person and beyond that especially now my mid-60s like who who i I don't wreck yeah i physically don't (laughs) recognize yeah and yet I haven't changed. Mm-hmm. I'm still the sexual person. I'm still outgoing. I still love to dance and go to music mm-hmm. venues. And, you know, I, I can get and run with my grandchildren. I mean, I can do all of that. Mm-hmm. But I look in the mirror and go, you know, so and I think that messes with your head when it comes to sexuality, especially in the dating world. So, you know? yeah, a part of a part of one of the things that I recommend everyone should have like a some sort of ritual uh, for self-care and a part of the mm-hmm. um, key thing in there is affirmations. So we've got to we've got to like counteract all of that. 
all of the stuff that comes in that's negative that tells you that, that your gray hair you've got another gray hair that popped up or whatever the things that are telling us that there's something wrong with the gray hair the things that are telling us that there's something wrong with our chin our skin changing we've got to counteract that with regular affirmations like ongoing so you recommend uh meditation affirmations that you know look in the mirror i'm beautiful i love you this yes you've got this sometimes feels ridiculous when you're doing it initially but like all day yes (laughs) yeah yeah i think it's it's very important because you've got to like counteract the stuff that's going out in the world like it's there's so much of it you know yeah yeah a big time and it's uh yeah and, 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 you know, living here in L.A., it's just what we're up against. And, oh, yeah. L.A. is a whole nother beast. Actually. Yeah, because we always look at something and say, oh, I want to be that or I want to yeah. look like that or I want I want to own that or, you know, and, and so it's it's the haves and the have nots mm-hmm. kind of thing. And when it comes to sexuality, I mean, we assume because someone looks a certain way or has certain things that they're really having a a great sex life and that you don't deserve it because you don't. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's just such a wrong way to right. think such a misnomer we have to get out of the idea of like okay once i get to this then i can be sexy or once i do x y and z then i can get in a relationship because it's like it's it's just silly it's like listening to a song like you don't wait to the end of the song you don't listen to a song to hear the end of it you know you don't watch a movie to watch the credits Right. You know, you're it's the that's a whole journey that is takes the pleasure. You on yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to sex, let's get down to the let's nitty-gritty. Let's get in there. Yeah. So <laughs> what I mean, what should we be doing to like be the most sexual human being that we can be when we're with a significant other? I mean, there there are twofold. I think there are there are women that have a partner and maybe have had a long-term partner and things have gone you know kind of Mm -hmm. dry literally and want to spice it back up and then there are the women that are in the dating scene and want to have a you know a good experience with someone they care for and maybe not someone who they've been intimate with for for a very long time so what do we do to spice everything up to make it to become our best sexual selves, I guess, is what I'm asking. So, yeah, I think the best sexual self comes from knowing yourself. Mm-hmm. That's what so, you're just saying. Yeah, so you, you have to know what you want first before and, and how to get it, you know, before you can ask someone else to be a part of that, really, to help you get there. So, um, and then... If you've got like any issues that are going on, anything that has changed or problems or things that you feel like are problems in your body, to have an understanding of what is actually happening, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of times we don't. We don't necessarily look down there with a mirror. We don't know Mm -hmm. the difference between our vulva and vagina. Like I know you map that out. Yeah. You know, the vulva Sorry, the vulva is the outside and the vagina is the inside. But a lot of people don't know that. They're like down there or JJ, you know. Yeah, they have these nicknames <laughs> Yeah, for little it. nicknames yeah. and um, may not really know where the pleasure is coming from. They may not know what parts hurt or, f- or feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And so to, you know, have a better understanding, like some of us need like a little refresher course because maybe the last course was when they were in eighth grade or yeah like a health grade, course and, and health it was course very where they, clinical where they put I, a condom on a banana and that's pretty much the uh, yeah don't get pregnant yeah Again, don't get here's pregnant. how you don't yeah um i uh when i was in college mm-hmm. i remember going to the health center and and this was really un, you know mind you i was in college in the 70s so it wasn't and there was a bit of sexual freedom at that time but not so much as let's say today so I was in a group session and it wasn't part of a health course this was volunteer voluntary and so what uh, oh I know I wanted birth control Mm -hmm. and they wouldn't give us birth control until we had the education so we sat on a floor in a circle and we all had mirrors and flashlights oh wow and we uh, together (laughs) 
we had to, and, and they went through, not looking at a chart, but our own anatomy. That is so progressive. And uh, it was so progressive because when I was reading your book, I was thinking, whoa, I did that in college. Oh, but I wow. remember being a little uncomfortable with all the other women around, but they were all d- girls. Yeah. We were all girls. We were all like 17 and 18. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it was part of their protocol mm-hmm. in order to get birth control from, you know, w- being part of the college deal you could get it for free mm-hmm. but you had to do this i mean i could have went to an outside doctor and i wouldn't have had to do that How interesting. but to get uh-huh. it for free you had to do this yeah. and i remember thinking wow everybody should know this because totally. we had I, I don't i can't remember it was some kind of pointer thing where we had to like where, what is this yeah where, exactly yeah. exactly what you were yeah. just mapping out mm-hmm. which you map out in your book with charts we had to do on our own bodies with a mirror and a flashlight yeah and well, i actually with my clients i i have them get a mirror and it's part of it you know yeah yeah because and you everyone's through. different you know like the innervation is different so what may work for you or you know what may feel one way for you may not feel the same for somebody else right so in the gotta, same place like, in the same see way yeah. where everything is and take the time out to do it because we rush through life you know what i mean we yes. jump in the shower we jump on the peloton we ju- you know like we do all these things and we don't necessarily n- know what is happening in our body right is, we're sort of doing the duty of yeah. having sex but it isn't really about having a finding intimacy and pleasure right and i would think that you would need to know your body from a pleasure standpoint in order to communicate to your partner right yeah so So, definitely getting back to your question is like what do we do to have that ultimate um sexual experience is to start there start um with what you've got going on (laughs) and you know map out where you're whether you can find out what what pleases you what feels nice what doesn't feel Mm -hmm. nice and it doesn't always have to be you don't have to get that information like in a sexual place sometimes you can be in the shower and just like feel what do you feel here okay this is how this feels when I do this you know Um, (laughs) and then you bring that then you bring that to the table you know yeah yeah Um, an experiment do you do you suggest to your clients and patients that they experiment with toys because i know you have talk about what (laughs) you have and the toys that you have and what they can what they do one of the um one of the things that people are often worried about is bringing a toy into the bedroom um and for themselves or with a partner? With a partner. With People a partner. are very anxious yeah. about that whole concept. But yeah. by and large, you know, most partners are like, hell yeah, let's bring bring it in. Let's get it, let's get yeah. it going. You, you know? just have to approach it. You yeah, have to. Yeah. It, you just have to. It's about, it. again, getting the, your own comfort level so that you can have those conversations. But I have not had one client yet well, who, when they finally talk to their partner about it who, like, Get that thing down. away like, from me. Yeah. 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 And there, there's an analogy. There's a, a book. I'm forgetting the name of the author, but the book is Becoming Cliterate. And she mentions in the in the book <laughs> about this experience where, you know, the couple is on a – they're at the pool. And they, they spend the pool – a day at the pool together. And they're enjoying themselves. Um, the woman is on the raft in the pool. They're drinking. They're relaxing. And, you know, they just have a great time out in the sun. Um, and so later on in this scenario, the, the friend, uh, the woman talks to her friend about like what a great day they had on this raft, um, on the, in the pool and she was on the raft and it wasn't like about the raft, you know, the raft was a part of the experience, Mm -hmm. but it was about like spending that time with her partner and having a great day. It wasn't like, oh man, you know, like. The raft. I can't stop thinking about this raft. You know what I mean? Uh-huh, <laughs> like, uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, the raft was an important part of the of the experience, but it wasn't the experience, right? And so, if you can have, if you need the, if you need to take your toy in the bedroom with your partner every time, and you're having mind blowing orgasms every time, bring the toy into yeah, the bedroom. Yeah, you know, you like yeah, create so, that. Yeah, I think absolutely. You know, if that is something that's going to help you get to um, a place of pleasure all day. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. that's good. And so you have, um, um, well, I was going to ask you, you mentioned, and I uh, alluded to it because it was in your bio, that you help women of color. Why are they more susceptible to being, uh, to, to having 
not wanting to talk about sex or not wanting to be so open about yeah, finding well, un- their sexuality. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's still um, racism in medicine. Mm-hmm. You know, and and there's bias in medicine that um, people aren't really aware of, you know, Um, and even from the they've done studies, actually, you know, on women comparing uh, white women to uh, black women after surgery and their request for pain. Um, And and it's it's mind blowing. But, you know there is a perception that black women are stronger, mm. that we have less um, need, we, la- we have less pain, you know, there's this perception. And it's it's an unconscious bias, you know, it's yes. not like people are like, oh, she's fine, you know, they no. just, it's, it's just in our, it's like just based it's on in our brains. what we think about from history. Yeah, I, and the I studies, think. yeah, the studies have shown that there is less regard, there's less regard for uh, black people and black women. Um, there's a there was one study that I I saw that even took it a step further about like colorism and like the skin tone. Like you're less likely to you ha- you're more likely to have a different uh, blood pressure readings if you're a darker complexion. And it's envi- <laughs> I think it's environmental and how you are are perceived in a world mm-hmm. um, that has that effect. And so if you look at, you know, even the birth statistics and the birth mortality, you know, there was a study that came out in 2021, I believe, um, that just showed that the mortality for black women um, in childbirth is so much higher. I remember that study coming out. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And so it's because they seek out less care. They're not as um, they... They're not getting uh, regular exams. They're not taking their vitamins. What What do you think that's? It's It's probably a combi- combination of access and then, but mm-hmm. but at the same time, like the, people are actually in in the hospital, so they're in their hospital and still dying. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. So there's some there's a problem systemically and with the care with the care. Yeah. And I've had patients, multiple patients over the years that I've worked. That when they come to me, they're like, oh, thank God, you know, like I've, I've found somebody who I know that will listen to me and 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 will hear what I'm saying and not like kind of poo poo that, you know, I'm, that you don't really have this problem. There are so, there are a couple of tropes that um, exist in terms of black women, um, you know, this idea of this of the angry black woman or also like. Um, this Jezebel who is like this woman who's sexual and you know mm. and so, so kind the, of like the extreme almost yeah one so or like the if, other or the mammy which is another oh yeah trope. The caretaker so, so if you have the ma- the mammy is is sort of like a caretaker the guy go- I don't know if you guys remember gone with the of wind of course yeah she won academy award yeah so yeah. that that sort of um, character where the perception is that this is not a sexual person and yeah. so she doesn't really have any sexual needs. We don't need to address that. Like, oh, there's nothing to talk about there. Right. Or if you're the Jezebel trope, if someone if someone looks at you and thinks, oh, yeah, she's a black, you know, Jezebel. And she's like, sexy, poor. you know, yeah. then th- then again, they're like, oh, you have no problems with sex. Right. And you're taking these stereotypes and yeah. you're putting a label on them and then you're putting everybody behind them in a little category right. and so that's and so what they get happens stuck in that subconsciously yeah. and i've mm-hmm. had i've i've literally had a, a patient you know patients multiple you know s- s- tell me that they've tried to express to a different provider um the same thing that they're expressing to me and just were not being heard yeah it's so, so lovely that you actually hear your patients and that you so can. Important. Yeah. Like, very, if we don't yeah, hear I our patients, your what, passion are we, for that what are we is, doing? <laughs> so we're down to yeah. the last few minutes. Oh. We didn't take a break. I wanted to go right oh through. So um, uh, people have to access your book. They have to get access your store because you have a couple of websites. Yes. So um, not everybody sees us, even though we have um, what's up on the screen right now. So let's verbally tell everybody how okay. to get in touch. So one, actually for your listeners and viewers, I'm doing a, a free giveaway of my book. Oh, lovely. So just go to whydontilikesexanymore.com. 
So just the title of the book, why don't I like sex and um, share your email and name with me and I, uh, you can download the book for free right there. Fabulous. Um, it's also available on Amazon if for some reason, uh, you want you the want, hard copy yeah, and not the, the PDF. Yeah. 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 So you can so share with that's your friends you after you read it. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you find out about the book. Um, so intimatewellnessshop.com is where you can find the products that support um, I love your logo. sexual <laughs> health and wellness. Yes. <laughs> that's <laughs> all it in a nutshell right there. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, yes, intimatewellnessshop.com. Um, and then if you're interested in coaching um, with me, you can go to goodgroove.com and um, find out more about how to do that there. And if somebody is looking for a new gynecologist, how do, would they reach you to Well, that? that might be a little bit more difficult because I am um, per diem, so I don't have my own practice at the moment. So. Okay. So that, but if you Google me, you could probably find right, out where figure I figure out where yeah. you're at, and, and then yeah, because yes. I can see you know, publicly, we don't want to throw yeah. that out. Okay, yes. well, so this was very informative. But what um, I want you to give us some final words. What do you you know? What just some words of wisdom to the general female population out there? Uh, words that. You can leave us by. I think that's important that everyone realizes that no matter what you're going through sexually, 100% somebody else has also gone through that. And it's normal. You know, there are fluctuations in our libido. There are changes in our body. They come, they go. And there's solutions to these issues that are coming up. So don't tap out. Like, you can still have beautiful, wonderful pleasure. Um, You just might need a little help getting there. I love it. I love it. And I really, I've gotten the book. Obviously, I've uh, alluded to it today. And I highly recommend that you go and get this book because it just, you just get familiar. You know, you go, oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yes, this this is me. And Mm -hmm. you find yourself there. And there are solutions to any kind of sexual pleasure. This is your given right. Yes. You know, this is what we're here for. To, to have happiness and having sexual pleasure is part of that. So, Dr. Janet, Yay. thank you for joining Thanks us. For thank you us. today. So thank you so much. And I want to thank you, my audience, for being here. And remember to keep going out and having those conversations that connect to a healthier you. There we go. We're out now. Bye, guys. See you two weeks. Two weeks. Bye now. <laughs> <laughs>